Hello, I'm Seaman Terpstra, and I'm the inventor of the Terpstra keyboard. My intention was to make something that's easy and fun to play for children and for adults. My message about the keyboard is just try it. You'll like it. It's fun. I definitely want to, I want to make sure that anything technical is completely buried, you know, so a person doesn't have to think about uh, anything technical. That is just something that's fun to play. Yeah, whereas the texture keyboard is, if you just put your hand down comfortably, you get a nice chord. So if you want to do some kind of a weird chord, you know, then maybe it's harder to finger it. But for the, the chords that most people use most of the time, it's easy. Yeah, that was my idea. Something that was really comfortable, eat comfortable to finger and fun to play. Twelve. Twelve is uh, not enough as far as I'm concerned. You could still do many things. You can retune the twelve in lots of different ways. But, uh, yeah, there's many things you can't do when you restrict yourself to twelve. Because people look at it and say, whoa, 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 there's so many keys, won't they get lost? But yeah, it's hard to explain that. They just have to sit down and actually play it a little bit, and then they realize, oh, it's pretty easy. I have a whole bunch of other designs that led up to that design uh, and I'd build a model and feel it and everything and eventually I would chuck them out, change it and it ended up with that one. And that one I fiddled with it for a long time and I couldn't improve it anymore so I ended up staying with that design. Okay. Yeah, that's the, that's the history of it in a nutshell. <laughs> I wanted it to be playable by children. This is awesome. This is one of the most mind-blowing things I've ever... This is the Terpstra keyboard. playing 31 notes to the octave now, which is why some of these chords sounded ridiculously awesome, like this one.
don't need a finger you just move the whole thing over. Wow. That's why it was designed that way. <laughs> At this point, if I would like to play some crazy chord, I just play it. I don't have to imagine what it would sound like. <laughs> I just, it's just, it's just, it's just play the chord. I've only played this thing for a total of how long now? Like, like ten minutes. <laughs> If I had this thing to practice on every single day, when I do have it on to practice every single day, I'm gonna play the I'm gonna play the heck out of this thing. I'm gonna practice a lot. This makes it all real, really. And also it would look nice on stage. Wow. If you if you're playing in a rock band and you're playing your, you know, your heavy metal piece or whatever. And uh, the the, uh, the rock musician on stage could just go do do stand there and kind of hit it with his hands like that, you know, and it would still still sound okay. <laughs> The height, you know, whether it's flat, flat was no good. Yeah. But if it was too vertical, was also no good. Yeah. Because you were playing like this all the time, you know. And and getting it the right angle, that was really hard. I tried in a few keyboards, a little more vertical, a little less vertical, and getting it, yeah, getting it good was not an easy task. And it was done completely non-technically for me. I just did it by feel, you know? I just built models. I didn't measure things and, uh, you know, I just built models. And uh, I ended up finding out that it was better to have it more shallow. So, yeah, this was, yeah, similar to a typewriter keyboard. Oh, it'd be a great keyboard for doing jazz. Yeah, because you could really, uh, any kind of whatever sort of weird chord complexity you like, you can just shift it wherever. So it's, you know, very handy for jazz. And I was thinking, yeah, that keyboard would be really good for jazz. Your keyboard? Yeah, yeah, because, because you can, whatever sort of weird altered chord you're using, you know, like in jazz, they like these really twisted chords. Once you get that one under your fingers, you could just move it anywhere, you know, and uh, 
So you could really instantly get some really wild jazz on it. <laughs> so easy to do stuff like that. You can just modulate without really thinking about the uh, exact fingerings or anything because it's the same. So you can be like, you know... Um, or sorry, let's say like... Uh, this is so easy. So, that's some stuff in 1910 equal temperament. Yeah, of course, that was also on the back of my mind that I have a long-term interest in alternative tunings. So I wanted something that was just as easy to play in one tuning as another tuning. You know, that I could set up whatever tuning I want and still be able to play it easily. I'm here, I'm Mike Battaglia, I'm here with Dr. Mandelbaum, and I just wanted to say thank you so much uh, for letting me play on this wonderful keyboard. This is the Terpstra. Um, it's really an amazing instrument, and uh, I'm really glad I had the opportunity to play on it. So. Uh, thank you. Like any other musical instrument, it's meant to be played on. We're delighted that you're here. We're delighted that uh, it's, it's giving you pleasure to do. And we hope that from this uh, will uh, come publicity for the instrument and possibly enough interest that uh, it could become um, commercially possible to uh, manufacture. I was looking for something that was easy to play. That was my uh, aim. That was my biggest criterion for the design. And also, I was looking for something that was uh, flexible, so you could play many tunings, like you said. And uh, something you don't mention that was in my mind also was I was looking for something that was good for little kids or that was good for teaching so, so that you could, um, you could learn music easier. You know, so a, a child could learn to play a keyboard much easier than the standard keyboard.